In this lesson, we're going to learn about reading the query string. What is the query string? You've probably seen one before, but you didn't recognize what it is and what it can be used for. The query string is essentially a little bit of information after the URL of the website. For example, here's my pcresale.net. That's the full URL, Uniform Resource Locator, to the website, right? www.pcresale.net. Now, let's say, hypothetically, that I wanted to advertise my website on other sites like Google and Yahoo and MSN, and I want to be able to track where visitors to my website come from. Well, I can do that by placing a query string after my domain name. For example, let's say I've got pcresale.net. I can put in here question mark that starts the query string and then name value pairs. For example, let's say refer equals Google. Okay. Now, of course, that by itself isn't enough to really do anything. You can check your server logs to see this stuff, but if you want your ASP pages to be able to use this so that perhaps you can store this information in a database or a log of your own, then you have to learn how to read the query string and you can tell where your visitors are coming from. Now, if I just submit this, nothing appears to change. First of all, because this is an HTML file, not an ASP file, but I don't have any code in here that reads the query string. So let's see how we can do that. Let's go back to my ASP 101 folder. Now, I'm gonna, I don't want to lose this form that we made, so I'm going to change this. I'm going to rename this default.asp to form. That ASP. So I still have that for later if I want it. Let's create a new default.asp. So I'll just simply right click. I'll come down to new and then blank page. And we'll call this one default.asp. See what I did? I renamed the old one and I just created a new blank one. Okay, here's my default.asp again. I'll get rid of all this stuff. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just inside of my design here, my regular design, I'm going to say greetings, greetings, and welcome from, and I'm going to put in here some X's. And I'm going to replace these X's in my ASP code with whatever the referring tag is, that referrer that I talked about earlier. Okay, so let's come in here into my code. And notice that um, front page was kind enough to replace that header section, even though I deleted it a few minutes ago. All right, let's create an ASP script at the top of my page, like that. And I'm going to come right inside here, and I'm going to say referrer equals request referrer, just like that. Now, if you're submitting from a form, it'll get the form value referrer, but... It will also read the query string for that value referrer. Okay, see how that works? Now, there are two separate commands you can use if you want to specify reading from a form versus the query string. Okay, you can say x equals request dot form something, like customer name. And you can say x equals request dot query string something customer name, if you want to specify where to get the data. This might come in handy if, for example, you want to force the page to read the data from a form and not the query string, or if you want to specify reading from the query string. We'll talk more in future lessons about when this is important. Okay? Yes, if you're working with a secure form, you want to make sure you say request.form so that hackers can't send your page stuff from the query string. But we'll talk more about that when we get into form security. For now, just know that the request command will read from either the form or the query string. Okay, so we don't have to worry about those specifics. All right, so now that I've read it, I can come down here and display it. I'm going to change these X's to my little ASP tags equals referrer. Right, what am I doing? I'm saying refer, a new variable in this page, equals request refer. Get the referrer value from the page I'm coming from or get it out of the query string. Down here, display it. Greetings and welcome from refer. You can't actually do this without putting it in a value. You could just put request.refer right in here, but I don't like doing that. It's bad code. 
Okay, I like to always put the values that I'm reading into a variable in the page. All right, let's save it. And let's go back to my browser. Now, this was the process page. So I'm just going to delete this because default.asp is what we want. And it says, greetings and welcome from period. Why is it blank? Well, I haven't specified anything in my query string, right? So I'm going to come over here now and say, question mark, referrer equals Google. And now I'm going to hit enter to submit the page. And there it goes. Greetings and welcome from Google. Now, if I knew how to program in databases, I could save this information to a log database. And then I can see how many of my visitors were coming from Google versus MSN versus Yahoo versus other sites. All right. So reading the query string like this is extremely important when you start working on your website. Now, you can do more than just this. For example, you can use the query string for all kinds of stuff. You can send, um, let's say, the customer's first and last name. Okay. Let's say FN equals request FN, like that for first name. LN equals request LN, like that. Okay. And then I'll come down here and say greetings, first name, last name, just like that. See that? Those are little tiny ASP tags, and this equals first name, equals last name, right in there. Now I need two values, one for first name, one for last name. Let's save that and see how we do this now. Okay, I'm going to say instead of refer equals Google, I'm going to come in here and say question mark, first name equals Joe, ampersand, LN, last name equals Smith. All right, see that? Use an ampersand to separate your values. You can have multiple values on here. I believe the maximum length for this URL is 255 characters. So you can't get too long, but you can get pretty long. All right, I'm going to press enter. Greetings, Joe Smith. Now we got a space problem here. We'll talk about that in a second, but just look what happened here. I set first name in my query string equal to Joe and LN last name equals Smith. In my code, I read them in. First name equals request FN. So it got FN from the query string right there. Okay, then LN equals request last name. There's LN, Smith, and then it displayed them. Now, what's going on with that space? Well, sometimes in your ASP code, if you do this, it doesn't always catch that space. So you have to physically put a space in there. And the HTML code for space is ampersand NBSP semicolon. Do you remember? You just got to remember that. I write it down, take notes, whatever. That's actually HTML. It's not an ASP thing. That is the HTML code for a space. It's ampersand NBSP semicolon. And the only way that I remember that off the top of my head is I've been doing this for 15 years. Okay? But now when I save it and then reload it, there's my space. See, I forced a space in there. If you want to see the whole query string, you can do this. Watch this. Q equals request dot query string. Now, I just put the whole query string into a value called Q. What I'll do is I'll come down here, put another paragraph in, and I'll say, open my ASP tags equals Q, like that. That should display the entire query string down on the bottom underneath the rest of my stuff. And there it is. See that? That's the whole query string. It's everything after the question mark. Okay? FN equals Joe and LN equals Smith. What this does is this breaks it up into those name value pairs, right? X equals 1, Y equals 2, B equals 3, and so on. Okay? That's a name value pair, right? See how that works? Not that hard. Why don't you see how it works? In fact, if you want to cheat and keep things simple, you don't even have to do this. Watch this. You don't, even, you don't have to use name value pairs. You could just put it in a single value like Q. All right, watch this. I'm going to cheat. See? I could just come up here and say, question mark, Joe. And it says, greetings, Joe. Okay, I've got some extra space in here, but that's fine. Okay. The reason being is because the whole query string is now just Joe. All right, see how that works? 
just question mark Joe. You don't have to necessarily make it a name value pair. You could say in here, Google. Right, so now you know that you're coming from Google. And that's just the entire query string. But generally, you use those name value pairs. And here's where you can actually get into displaying different content based on where they're from. Right, you can say if Q equals Google, then, you know, response dot write welcome Google user, else response dot write hi there, and if. Okay, so now if the user's coming from Google, they get welcome Google user. Otherwise, if they're coming from, let's say, MSN or any other site, it just says hi there. So that's how you can start to change up the content in your pages based on where your visitors are coming from, and that information is in the query string. How do you get that information in the query string in the first place? Well, you basically have to give them the URL that you want. If you're placing an advertisement on another service, make sure you specify that in the URL when you give them the link to link back to you. All right, if you're using like Google AdWords, for example, you can specify that in your advertisement. All right, so now you know how to read data from a submitted form, and you can read data out of the query string. And those two methods are how you can get information from one page to another inside your website. There are some other tricks I'm going to teach you too, like session variables and application variables and whole lots of neat stuff coming up in future lessons, but that's the basics of it.